Module 9.2 Exponential Integrals and a Logarithmic Rule Objective 1. Find the indefinite integrals of exponential functions. Objective 2. Find the indefinite integrals using the logarithmic rule. Objective 3. Use the indefinite integrals of logarithmic rule and exponential functions to solve real-world applications. Objective 1. Find the indefinite integrals of exponential formula. If we're given the integral of e to the kx, where k is a constant, dx, then this will give us 1 over the constant times e to the kx plus the missing constant. For bases other than e, we can use our algebraic law that states e to the natural log of a to the x and then we will be able to bring the x out front, so this would be equal to e to the x times the natural log of a. So we can write this algebraically from this to this. And then, once we get to this point, we would be able to use our formula. Now let's see how to work a few of the next examples. In example one, if we take this integral, we would be able to pull the seven out front. So we can rewrite this as, 7 times the integral of e to the x dx. And since there's an understood 1 that's in front of the x, then that would just simply give us 7 e to the x plus our missing constant. And that would be the answer for number 1. So notice that the integral of e to the x is simply e to the x because the coefficient of x is 1. Let's look at the second one. Now this one, I'm going to modify this equation, and I'm going to rewrite this using my division law. And if you divide x to the fifth into the x to the fifth, that will be e to the 3x minus 1 over x to the fifth, all times the derivative of x. And this would be equal to the integral of e to the 3x minus x to the negative fifth power. Now notice in this case I simply brought the 5 up which changed the sign. Okay, and so now since we have two things, so since we have two terms, we're going to separate them and take the integral of each one. So the first one would 1 over 3 e to the 3x. So notice I took the constant and put it up under 1 and then rewrote the function minus, and then here for this second one we're just going to simply use our power rule which would be x to, x to the negative fourth because I'm going to add 1 to negative 5, negative 4 over the new denominator plus c, and then we can pull the x to the bottom and so that would be equal to uh, e to the 3x, that would be 1 third e to the 3x Actually, it would be plus because we have two minus signs, right? So it would be one-fourth, and the x to the fourth would be on the bottom because it had a negative exponent, plus c. And we would be have the integral of this one. In example three, we need to find the integral of 7 to the x. Now, remember the note from our introductory page where we can change this to the integral of e to the natural log of 7 to the x, which dx, which means we can write this as the integral of e x natural log of 7 dx using our algebra laws. And then now we can, we can do our calculus on this. Now I want you to remember that the ln or natural log of 7 is nothing but a constant number and so since it's a constant number we can write it in the k position times e to the x natural log of 7 plus c so notice we just treat this as the k and it's 1 over k here times e with the the exponent intact. And so we would have the integral in example three. Objective two, 
Find the indefinite integral using the logarithmic rule. The formula for this is if you have the integral of 1 over x dx, then 1 over x is equal to the natural log of x plus a constant. So again, let's look at this example here where we have the integral of 7 over x. Well, first of all, 7 is nothing but a constant, so we can simply rewrite this as 7 times the integral of 1 over x dx. And then, because we have our law, we can write this as 7 times the natural log of x plus c. And we are done. Example 2 we're going to intermingle some of the rules that we had earlier with the logarithmic rules. So here we go. Let's take each of these things and separate them. All right. So this is going to be the integral of, let's put 4 out front, 1 over x dx plus, we can take the 3 out of this one, that would be 3 times the integral of e to the 2x dx plus, all right, I'm going to write this one minus the integral of 7x to the negative fourth. Notice how I brought the x to the fourth up to the top, dx, plus, and this one is just one where we use our exponential exponent rule, which is x to the two-fifths dx. Okay. And I broke this into simple parts so that we can look at each so that we can look at each one of them. So this would be equal to. So the first one is going to give us four times the natural log of x, and the second one is going to give us. We already had the three, and remember the the uh, coefficient of x in the exponent is going to be in the denominator. So we'll have three over two e to the two x minus. Here, we are going to add 1 to the exponent, so this will be 7x to the negative 3 over negative 3. So we'll go back and fix that one in just a minute. Plus, and this will be x, we're going to add 5 fifths or 1 to this one, which will be 7 fifths all over 7 fifths plus our c. Okay, so let's clean it up a little bit. So this will be equal to 4 times the natural log of x plus we got three halves this one's good e to the 2x okay we have two negatives in this one and the x needs to go to the bottom so that's going to be plus 7 over 3x to the third we like to write things with positive exponents and then in this one plus I'm going to flip the 7 fifths that's going to be 5x to the 7 fifths over 7 plus our C. And we have now integrated. Objective 3. Use exponential integrals and the logarithmic rule to solve real world applications. Find the integral for the following derivative that satisfies the given condition. Okay, again, we're, we've got the derivative of this function and we need to find f of x. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to integrate the derivative to get us back to the function. So let's integrate 8e to the t minus 6 dt. And the reason it's dt is our variable is t here, and we're not sure what t actually consists of, so we've got to make sure to take the derivative of the t. Okay, comma. All right, so now if we integrate first one that's going to give us 8 e to the t because the 8's the constant and e to the t will just give us e to the t minus 6 t over 1 which will still give us 6 t plus c and now we're going to plug 0 in for x or in this case it's going to be for t so that would be 8e to the 0 minus 6 to the 0 plus c, and this is going to be equal to 1. So e to the 0 is 1, so that would give us 8 times 1, which is 8, minus 0 plus c is equal to 1, and I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I'm going to get that c 
is equal to negative 7. And so I'm going to rewrite this as 8e to the t minus 6t minus 7. And we will have our function. Example 2. During 36 weeks in a certain flu season, the rate at which the number of cases of influenza per 100,000 people in a country change could be approximated by the derivative of i is equal to, and we've got this exponential function, where is the total number of people and t is the time measured in weeks. Assume that i of o is equal to zero. Approximately how many people per 100,000 contracted the influenza during the first 29 weeks? Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get i of t. So we need to undo the derivative. So we're going to take the integral of this function, which is 3.253e to the 0.1045t dt. OK, so that's the first thing we're going to do is take this integral. OK, and remember. When we do that, we're going to get this number, and then we're going to put this number on the bottom. So we're going to get 3.253 divided by 0.1045e to the 0.1045t plus the constant. Okay, and they said, so now we've got the integral, so we've got i of t. And they say that, assume that i of 0 is equal to 0. So let's plug in 0 for t and set this equal to 0. Okay. If I plug 0 in for t here, that's going to be 0 times that. That'll give us 3.253 divided by 0.1045 e to the 0, which is 1 times 1, plus c is equal to zero. And I'm going to subtract this number on both sides. Well, let's first find out exactly what this number is. So breaking out my calculator, I'm going to get that this is a little bigger than 31. Let's call it 31.13. So I'm going to subtract 31.13 from both sides. So that's going to give me C is equal to negative 31.13. Okay, so I subtracted that and that gives me C. Alright, so now that I've got C, I can rewrite this function and I'm going to write it as, okay, our new I of T is going to be equal to 3.253 divided by 0.1045 E to the 0.1045t minus 31.13. Okay, now that I've got that, we need to find if the time is 49 weeks, we need to plug, or excuse me, if the time is 29 weeks, we need to plug 29 into this function. So it's going to be 3.253 over 0.1045 e to the point 0.1045 times 29, which is my 29 weeks, and t represents weeks in this case, okay, minus my 31.13. So let's break out our calculator and let's see what we get for i of t. So i of 29 will be equal to, and I'm getting... 613.49, so let's round it to 613. So that's how many people per 100,000 contracted influenza during the first 29 weeks.